أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In this session, I'm going to discuss how to use exploratory factor analysis in SPSS for scale development purposes. That's only part of it. Obviously, exploratory factor analysis is followed by confirmatory factor analysis. But for now, we are just focusing on exploratory factor analysis. But before I go on to use EFA in SPSS for my scale development purposes, I would like to discuss a few important things. Now, this is the scale that I want to test. This is the scale that I have developed and I want to test it using exploratory factor analysis. Now, what's, what it is that I want to do with exploratory factor analysis? But before that, let me highlight how did I come up with this scale? Now, in order to come up with this scale, one normally does two things. First, we have to go into the existing research and identify what scales are available to measure the particular concept. In this case, I'm interested in measuring social responsibility of the university or university social responsibility. But when I go and see the literature that is available, I find out that there are a number of different scales that are used to measure social responsibility. But majority of them are measuring social responsibility of different business organizations. So there is a gap. Now in order to fill this gap, I try to measure a particular concept in the universities. And in this case, the concept is social responsibility. So while reading through those existing papers or research papers that have developed a scale, I see a number of different items that can or that are utilized to measure the concept. I see that a number of those items can be utilized to measure social responsibility in university as well. So I select those items. Once I select those items, once I select those items, another process that I do is that I go for focus group discussions or interviews to identify additional items that can measure the concept. So for that purpose, once I interview people, once I do focus group discussion, a number of keywords um, are pointed out. And those keywords can later help formulate statements. Statements like this. For example, an interviewee might have said that, okay, universities should have a code of, code of conduct. Now, that's a keyword. So I transform that keyword into this particular statement. So once I identify statements from existing literature, plus my interviews or focus group discussion, once I'm going through these statements, you have to identify whether these statements can be grouped into particular dimensions. And those dimensions lead to measure that particular concept. So it's sort of a tree. The first thing is you have a construct, you have dimensions, and then you have items. So these items are categorized into dimensions and dimensions, they represent the particular construct. So this is all theory. Now I'm going to use EFA or exploratory factor analysis in SPSS to see whether what I expected actually happens or not. So I expect these items to come together or load together. I expect these items to load together. I expect these items to load together. So I'm expecting a three factor solution from my exploratory factor analysis. Now we will run exploratory factor analysis on our data and see whether my expectation actually results in reality or not. Whether I get a three-factor solution that actually measures university social responsibility. In my case, how I operationalize university social responsibility is that it has got three dimensions. Ethical responsibilities, research and development responsibilities, and philanthropic responsibilities. Now, each of these dimensions have got these items. So these items, they are representing this dimension. So they should load together in EFA.
these items should load together and these items should load together. Now here is our data. Now in order to run your exploratory factor analysis, what you need to do is you need to go to analyze, dimension reduction and factor. I've already added them. Let's me put them back and just select them all by pressing control A. Press your arrow button and they are put in here. Now let's see what options we've got. Go to descriptives and we'll select KMO and Bartlett test and we need this reproduced option checked for our model fit. Press continue, go to extraction and we are doing principal component. Let the other options be as they are. Go to rotation and we are going to use Verimax and leave the score as they are. Go to options and as I mentioned, we need factor loadings greater than 0 0.50. So any item that does not have loading less than 0 0.50 or sorry, greater than 0 0.50 will not be shown in the results. How this works, I'll let you know. Just wait and watch. Just press continue and press OK. And here is our output. Now let's see. Our KMO is 0 0.931, which is marvelous. Our Bartlett test is significant, so which means that the variables, those 19 variables have got correlation with each other. Commonalities, almost all of them are good. There's one with 0.461, but we are not going to delete it right away. There is one this 0.377 and the rest of them look good, but this is uh, quite weak. This is close to 0 0.50, so we'll keep it for a moment. And if we see, we've got three factors with eigenvalue greater than one. So we are not going to go for other factors and we're going to keep three factors. So this will be a three factor solution. The cumulative percentage is almost 60% for three factors, which is good. And this is the component matrix, which shows the loadings for each of the variable or each of the item. And there is reproduced correlation that we are going to use for our model fit. And if we look down here, this is there are 61, 35% of non-redundant residuals. So which means that there is good model fit because this is less than 0 0.50. Now this is what we are interested in, rotated component matrix to see whether our items for a particular construct load well together or not. Now if we see that, ER 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, these 7 items are measuring ethical responsibilities and they are loading well together. But look at this, RD2, well this actually belongs to research and development but it's not loading well with its own items or the other items in the construct. If you look at this, philanthropic responsibilities, all items are loading well together. So we see there is some problem, RD1, there is no loading at all. So it has loading less than 0 0.50, that's why it's not loading at all. The loading, the loading means that how well this particular item is associated with its parent construct. Now if you see here, ER1, 2, ER7, all items have got loading greater than 0 0.50. So this means that they are being representing or they are representing their underlying construct well. But this item, RD1, there is no loading, which means that it is not so showing any association with any factor whatsoever. So this needs to be removed. RD2, well, it should have loaded here somewhere with its own items, with the other items of the construct, but it's not. So this needs to be removed as well. Now, PR1, no loading whatsoever. This needs to be removed as well. Let's say, let's start with one. Let's remove RD2. So let's remove all this. Go to analyze, dimension reduction, factor, and let's say we remove RD2. And just press OK. Sometimes ha what happens is, uh, by removing one item, others tend to fall in place. So just remove one by one. And look at this. But still RD1 is nowhere to be seen, no loading at all, less than 0 0.50, not representing its underlying construct, no association, 
PR1, no loading, so it's not representing its underlying construct. No need to be, they, they, they don't need to be in the study. So let's remove RD1 and then we'll remove PR1. And let's see. Again, PR1 is nowhere to be seen, no loading. So we remove PR1 and let's see what factor structure we get. And look at this, we have got a very clear factor structure. Three factors extracted as we expected. Ethical responsibility, research and development responsibility, philanthropic responsibility and this is what we expected in theory. And this is what we got in practice. Now how do you report these results? In order to report these results, I've got a template here. So you start with an EFA was performed using principal component analysis and varimax rotation. The minimum factor loading criteria was set to 0 0.50. The commonality was set to 0 0.50 as well. And let's see the commonalities. This is slightly this one, but obviously uh, this, this item, now you, there's another important lesson here. You just do not go on to deleting spree. So you can mention in your explanation that only one item had commonality slightly less than 0 0.50. But obviously it did not affect the overall factor structure. And it loaded well onto its own item. If you see its own loading and what's the loading of ER6? If we see its ER6, well it's 0 0.571 which is well above the required loading. So this is something that is sometimes subjective so you need to mention here that this item was kept although it has slightly lower commonality an important step involved weighing all overall significance of the correlation so you report your bartlett test you report your kaiser meyer alkin measure of sampling adequacy now this is what is this this is your initial results the first time that you ran your factor analysis now once you remove the items you need to mention what items were removed and why so one item was removed because it did not load onto uh, a factor or it load onto a factor that is other than the, its required factor. And two items were removed because they did not show any loading. So you need to explain this as well. And finally, you mention the final results. The variance, the kaiser meyer alkin and the other details as well. And this is how you report your factor analysis results in a table, factor 1, factor 2, factor 3, the name that you have given to the factors. I'll share this, uh, the link to this um, reporting mechanism in the description. I hope the video would have helped you understand the concept of exploratory factor analysis, how to run it and how to report it. Thank you very much.